come back with another video today we have what the f happened to the faculty if you haven't seen this movie i suggest you go and see it it's one of my favorite movies of that era i don't even know what era it was but i caught it it's on both screens without further ado let's get straight into the video let me know was you i was zeke growing up was you zeke was you casey stokely Delilah, Wagwan Delilah, who else? It was Or was you Stan? Yeah, I was Zeke. But let's continue. You have to fight. Fight what? You don't even know who's alien and who's not. Body snatchers became emotional. Maybe they lost their identity. Damn show I was not Stan. Ain't yeah, this Stan. Nah, this Casey. Yeah, Stan is the other one. This Casey. I was not Casey. Casey got the slip over and fall gene. You know in all the movies when a a, a little Caucasian girl running, she trip over her I call it the slip and fall gene. I definitely didn't have that gene and I wasn't running from nothing. But let's continue. Take the classic teen stereotypes, like those in The Breakfast Club. Add a serious dose of the 1990s, mix in a potential alien invasion, and a bunch of somewhat familiar names about to hit it big on screen and a memorable alt soundtrack. What do you get? Well, you get a weird subgenre of films from the late 1990s, but in particular, you get the faculty. So let's jump into what the f happened to this horror movie. In The Faculty, the cast gathers a jock who doesn't want to be a jock anymore. The cheerleader, who cares about looks, but also cares about her writing for the school's paper. The nerd, the incorrectly labeled weirdo, the help- Casey, my bad, I was calling him Cassie, Casey. It's close enough. It's close enough. All right. The fat kid who sells drugs, the new girl, and a few other hangers on. <laughs> Matching these teens, the adults so include drugs. the school staff, including the typical football coach, the hot teacher, the exhausted nurse. The oh yeah, her, what's, what's her name? I seen her in, what she was in the X-Men is I don't know her name but I like her a lot she is sexy as hell I was Zeke the exhausted nurse the old teacher the strict principal the cool science teacher and a few parents including one who has an anger issue I was these calling people it. are all at the center of what yeah, looks to be an alien invasion the beings enter the humans to slowly take them over completely and make them more pliable supposedly better versions of themselves our gang of misfits is the only group able to see that something is wrong hence the only ones able to save the school things get weirder and weirder for the group as their suspicions are clear and the adults seem to be the first ones to be affected in terms of a science fiction alien invasion film the story by david wechter and bruce kimmel is a little bit basic this story was turned into a script by kevin williamson who basically could do no wrong following Scream, and this one has his signature. That's, I was just about to say that it remind like, the girl that pe played as Delilah in The Faculty. I don't know how or why, it's just something that's familiar about her. Like, she remind me of the, what's the girl from Scream, Sydney. It's for some reason, I don't know why. And one of them was in... One of them was in um, that movie called The Craft. I always, let's continue though. Get your style all over it. How much of it came from the original story? And how much too. of it came from Williamson? Well, after rewatching Scream recently, and now the faculty, the language, the mannerism, and the pop culture references all feel very Williamson. Body yeah, it do. Story, somebody made up, Dingus. It's located in the fiction section. List. Another aspect that influenced this film style is who directed it. Back in the 1990s, the man was better known for El Mariachi, Desperado, and From Dusk Till Dawn. Before the that was my movie growing up as well, Desperado. Faculty came up. Fans of his were very much expecting his style here, and well, they both got it and didn't. The film does have some of Rodriguez's flair. 
but it also feels a bit subdued for his early career. Knowing where he went from there with the Spy Kids films, Sin City, and Planet Terror, this slight departure fits just fine in his career path. The man loves fun movies and does them with talent. This means that the faculty was, oddly enough, in the right hands. Not all will agree with this, but looking back now, it works because of those involved. Adding to the writers and director are those in front of the camera. And my word, is that cast impressive now? Leading the group of misfits is Elijah Wood, who isn't top billed, far from it if one looks at the IMDb page for the film. Woods was pre-Lord of the Rings and playing the most famous hobbit of all. He was also post The Good Son, North, Forever Young, and those Paul Abdul videos. He was established, but he wasn't nearly as huge as he would get in 2001. So his presence is interesting and not entirely surprising, especially looking at the films he now selects. Playing his misfit co-leader is Jordana Brewster, who is just about to hit it big, also in 2001, with the Fast and the Furious franchise. But what did she have before the faculty? Well, she had one uncredited appearance on a kid's television show and one appearance on All My Children. She wasn't exactly famous, to say the least, but she attracted attention fast in the trailer for the... Yeah. Look at Delilah. Delilah always been cute to me. I like her. She got prominent facial features, like very structured, and she just was always cute to me. I'm trying. Am I picking Delilah or Sydney? I think Sydney is a Canadian. Like the South Park characters, they talk with their head open. I'm going with Delilah. You ain't gonna know what I'm talking about. Let's continue. The faculty. Also not established by much, but the top build back in the day was Josh Hartnett. Not long after this, he was a bona fide teen heartthrob. But in 1998, he only had um, Halloween H2O right. and a short film behind him. Not exactly a ton of help to sell this film, but he scream? was a hit with the teens. And his I mean, face- I at Halloween was that 1998 he only had halloween h2o and a short hold on i think this yeah film behind him not exactly a ton of help to sell this film but he was a hit with the teens and his face was all over mags like ym and other teenage publications of course his career hasn't stopped since then, even if some choices have been iffy. He has been involved in big titles like Pearl Harbor and Sin City, as well as a slew of indie films. Now, the rest of the teens here are played by familiar faces, such as Usher, who was fresh off his second album in 1997 and was pretty much a fixture on music video stations. This was his official feature film debut. Also in the teen cast are Clea Duvall, fresh off Can't Hardly Wait, Laura Harris, who had been a TV movie regular, and Sean Hedosi, who had a solid body of work already. On the adult character side, most of the cast needs no introduction. The coach played by Robert Patrick, everyone's favorite T-1000, Salma Hayek, who had worked with Robert Rodriguez twice already on Desperado and From Dusk Till Dawn, Piper Laurie, who horror fans love to hate, and Carrie, Hold Phoebe on. Newark. She was in Desperado, I never heard. It's been a while since I've seen Desperado. And he he always been a bad guy. He looked like the bad guy, no matter what. I don't trust him. I just think he an Agent Smith. He just fit within that that energy, that archetype. He just he he the bad guy in every movie. He guess twice already on Desperado and From Dusk Till Dawn, Piper Laurie, who horror fans love to hate, and Carrie, Phoebe Newworth, who had been in a little bit of everything. John Stewart, who had already hosted his own show and been on a ton of television series. Pompke Jansen, who was no stranger to horror already and about to hit even bigger than she already had as a Bond girl. Oh yeah, her... oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. What was her name? Exenia. James Bond Golden Eye. Uh... I'm trying to think, what is my favorite what is my favorite? Only how do you even verbalize this? Hold on, without being a thing. What is my favorite female actors? That's that's Caucasian. I'm I don't know her name. He just said it, but I don't know it. It's her. It's Prime Angelina Jolene. 
It's Margaret Robbie and Scarlett Johansson. In no particular order, I love Scarlett Johansson's face. I, I love her mouth. Um, what else? We got some more. I'm forgetting some for sure. You can put Delilah in there too. Had as a Bond girl with her part in the X Men series. Yeah. These are but a few of the familiar faces in this film. Many of them were about to become household names and huge ones at that, but most of them were just vaguely familiar from previous work. This film hit the casting jackpot, something that absolutely must be a factor in why people still. Like these days, just looked at fun. Like, it looked at fun. Like, I always wish school was like that for me growing up. Like, you see these kind of movies, and I think another one is. I don't know if I don't know which one it was, but it was Jeepers Creepers, and they had like the varsity jackets. I wish it was like that in school, you know. But when I was going to school, we didn't even have blockers. Some bullshit going on. Um, yeah, this whole era was like it was different, bro. Look for it 25 years later. Another huge factor in the film doing so well and sticking around is how good the special effects are for the time, of course. Long after its original release, the film's special effects still look more than decent. This is what we call the practical effects advantage. Most of the film's effects were practical with some CGI, so the work by the fine folks <laughs> can be effects. That scene was goofy as hell. This... <laughs> this scene was goofy as hell, bro. This will not work now. This some bullshit. So the work by the fine folks at KNB Effects Group and those of XFX Inc. got to shine. Most horror fans know who KNB are, as in Robert Kurtzman, Greg Nicotero, and Howard Berger. For those unfamiliar, KNB has been responsible for fantastic, gross out effects and more subtle ones since the days of Evil Dead 2 before they were known as KNB and have been involved in everything from Dances with Wolves to Army of Darkness, from Dusk Till Dawn to Nightmare Factory. They have had their hands in so many horror films and non-horror films, just about everyone who watches films or television knows their work and their name. Something else not to be forgotten is the power of a great soundtrack, which many 1990s films knew well and how to set up perfectly. The soundtrack to the faculty includes everyone from The Offspring to Soul Asylum to Garbage to Stabbing Westward to Oasis to Creed. Yes, even Creed, who have lost a lot of its luster since then, but were huge back in 1998. That cover of Another Brick in the Wall may not be as insanely perfect as the original, but it is just the right mood for the film and brings the current viewers back to 1998 within a few seconds of the intro. With all this talent involved, one can easily expect the numbers for this film to have been insane. Well, not really. The film cost 15 million US to make, something that seems like pennies compared to current sci-fi romps with this kind of cast. It made a solid 63.2 million US at the box office, which isn't chump change at all. But once again, compared to current numbers, it's not that huge. That being said, the film was a hit. Somebody let me know. Okay, it was, what was it again? Pay what was it something 16 million and he made 60 something million is they what's the taxes on it it's not that huge that being said the film was a hit and it more than made its money back oh. cast it made a solid start up 11 million 63.2 million US at the box office which isn't chump change at all but once again compared to current numbers it's not that huge that being said the film was a hit and it more than made its money back so why no sequel well simply put not everything needs a sequel besides a lot of films released in the late 1990s did not get sequels like idle hands and disturbing behavior or took years and years to get one with mediocre results so perhaps no sequel here is a blessing And now for some trivia, because trivia is fun and can make you win at Trivia Nights, sometimes. Here, this film has a bunch of odd stuff available about it all over the web, and it's one of those films people either love and adore or have entirely forgotten about. There is no middle here. 
first, both Sarah Michelle Gellar and Charisma Carpenter were almost in this movie. It could have been a rather different film with them both in there together. Carpenter was considered for the part of Delilah, which she declined because it was too close to Cordelia on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And Gellar was considered I for an unnamed that role, show. I was just... so it's most difficult to judge if she'd have been the right choice. At the time, both were getting a lot of interest. And while Carpenter mostly stuck Damn. to Buffy, Geller had both I Know What You Did Last Summer and Scream 2 in 1997, which appealed to the same public, and Cruel Intentions in 1999. So she was a busy lady. Also considered for the part of Delilah was Jessica Alba, who ended up working with Rodriguez later in the Sin. She in it too. She added to the list. I don't know if she Caucasian though, or if she is, she mixed with something else, I think. I don't know. She looked like she mixed with something else or something. going crazy in the 90s and, and everything like city films the spy kid series and the machete films at the time she was busy with television series and a few upcoming big films another actress who passed she on a part in the faculty oh shit told you i'd be fox motor rolling at this bitch with an agent scully before i settle for a thought i think not yeah dana scully yeah i was fox motor yeah. Damn. This just extended my list. So we got the Exenia from James Bond. Forgot her name. We got Delilah. We got Margaret Robbie. We, we got Scarlett Johansson. Prime Angelina Jolene. We got Dana Scully. I got a long list when it comes to them. Yeah. Yo, I like this. I like this. I like this video a lot already. Who's showing? He's showing my whole lineup, and I never, I never knew. I never knew he was gonna have none of this in his video. All right, we got Dana Scully. All right. It was Jillian Anderson, who is busy with this little television show called The X Files, and it also put your top ten. Your top ten. Your top 10 female actors in the, in the comment section. I'm, I'm referring to the, they gotta be, I'm talking about white girls. Those, those my favorite. And I'm pretty sure some more too. I just can't think of a face scan. I can't think of it right now. I can't see it. But yeah, those, some of them for sure. Like what? So appeared in Playing by Heart, 1998 with Jon Stewart. This crew was busy. Both the actual cast members and those who were approached yeah, I love for the Dana film Scully. but didn't end up in it. Cheryl and Fenn was also considered for a part. Another actress who basically didn't end up in the faculty, besides one very short scene in a classroom, is Kadada Jones, who played Venus, a victim of the cutting room floor. She only has six acting credits to this day, and were she not cut, who knows where the faculty could have taken her. For those who remember the promos for the film, some of her scenes were shown in the previews for the movie, and she was part of the cast that did a Tommy Hilfiger campaign to coincide with the film's release. This was a trade for product placement of Hilfiger's line in the movie. You know what I want to do? Like, things that's so nostalgic to me. Like, I want to... I don't know if they do things like this. Let me know if they do, but I don't know. Like, I would like to open up some... Like, a drive-in movie theater. But where it play, like, 90s movies. Like, the best of what the... You know? Um, well, at least primarily. That's what I wanted to do. It's like, it can show some here and there or whatever, but... And I want, like, some, like... I want like some club that play like 90s music as well. Like you remember, uh, what was that? Um, yeah, Permis Promiscuous Girl with Nelly Furtado and um, what's his name? Timberland. Like when I played that era, the 90s and, bro, that shoulda be dope. And then you dress up for it too, dress up like the 90s and all that. Like what? It was no era like that era. I promise you. Even though I, I got a glimpse of it, barely. Uh, that shit, even looking back on it, like, and comparing it to now, now have nothing on then. In no way, shape, form, or capacity. Except for you got a PlayStation 5 now. That's it. It was different, bro. Touch my body by Mariah Carey, all right? <laughs> Writer Kevin Williamson 
was brought in to make the story and script more hip for teens following the success of Scream. He was also supposed to direct, but he passed on those duties in favor of teaching Mrs. Tingle, being his directorial debut in 1999. The movie is often referred to as a Robert Rodriguez and Kevin Williamson film in terms of style, something that is easy to spot. But in Rodriguez's- I always wanted to play in a movie. I wanted to be like one of the main characters in a final destination. Like my fate, I don't even know if I got a favorite one necessarily because I like the first one a lot, but I like the, what was that? I think that's the third one when they on the rides. Yeah. Yeah, they should put me in a movie. I should be one of the, the jocks, one of the college campus kids with the um varsity jacket on. I wanted to do something like that growing up because it just give me that vibe still. Same as with the... um. The faculty and um, scream like that, that feel it has. This side of things, he got to add all kinds of nods to his other films. His friends, oh, and this his a W video. A scene where names he are showed called all to the principal's my... office. Thomas Nix is called a name familiar to Rodriguez as a friend's name. Another familiar name is Tito and Lavera, a graffiti scene in the bathroom, representing the band who had music and appeared in both From Dust Till Dawn and Desperado, released a few years before the faculty. Rodriguez's sister Tina plays the tattooed girl seen early on. He also cast his longtime friend and fellow Austin resident. What was her name? I liked her too. It's like off rip. If I'm if I'm looking at her, I'm like, I ain't gonna look at her again. But if I'm sitting there and Toronto, looking at her, released uh, a few years before the faculty. Rodriguez's sister Tina plays the tattooed girl seen early on. What was her name? Her right here. I forgot what was her name in the movie. But when I heard her little country accent, she, I like her too. He also cast his longtime friend and fellow Austin resident, Harry Knowles, as a teacher. This allowed him to give Elijah Wood information about a project Peter Jackson was gearing up for, which Wood sent a self-tape audition that landed him the part of Frodo. Other film fans will see nods to include The Thing in the drug test scene. One of the teachers is named Edward Furlong. A nod to T2 Judgment Day, in which Robert Patrick, who always plays the, the bad guy, here, appears as a T1000. Robert Patrick also finds himself in a scene where he chases Principal Drake in a hallway, a scene that mirrors one from T2. A scene between yet again Robert Patrick and this time Christopher McDonald references the latter's character, Shooter McGavin, in Happy Gilmore. Invasion of the Body Snatchers is discussed, but with the incorrect ending referred to. In more indirect ways, the film references Stepford Wives, The Breakfast Club, and a bunch of others. An alien queen is referred to as something used as a clue as to who the head of the aliens is, but also a reference to the alien film series. The head walking away from the car accident scene is a reference to many other films and pieces of art, including reanimated. I didn't the like that scene the rainbow, at all. And with a slight difference, The Thing. In terms of current availability, the faculty has had a few DVD releases, including the very first one way back in the day, which was as bare bones as they come. It was somewhat recently released on Blu-ray. Look, bro, we gotta go back. Look at her. She just got a sex appeal to her like no other, like, and it's all in the face, and it's an energy thing. One but. way back in the day, which was as bare bones as they come. It was somewhat recently released. Look at her. She... she she can take the remaining of my chakra reserves. I'll be rejuvenated by tomorrow, three to five business days. I love her a lot. It ain't even like I love her. I don't even know her name, but I love her. Genuinely, I honestly do. I might take a straight bullet for her. Like, I love her. I really do. She made life better growing up. And again, I appreciate the small things. Some people, it's just entertainment. I interpret things totally different. It could be one thing that's one syllable. I can take that and blow it up and make a Picasso. So it's about how the individual interpret it, and I know the impact. And she made things better, even if I was beating my dick at the... She made things better, so... I appreciate her. She had a positive contribution to my life and my experience. So, yeah, I love her a lot. Fuck Dr. Umar. If I'm in front of these, we have him Paul Walker's. They gonna beat them guys who they got swag, they got the melanin element. You can't beat them. They gonna be John Wicks, James Bonds, Keanu Reeves, and John Jones all at once beating your ass. Like, he ain't taking your bitch. But yeah, I love her a lot. She, yeah, she top three of all time.
released on Blu-ray in both North America and the UK, which are almost bare bones. This film needs a packed re-release ASAP. Juan, Juan it's Delilah, one of those that slipped through the cracks for too many people, and it deserves better in terms of a disc release. If you ain't see this movie, go and watch this movie. And I'm here to tell you, spoilers, this is, this isn't fiction. It's non-fiction actually, and it happened in Ohio. I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. A while back, aliens had took over. You see what's going on to us as a collective? We being lied to, mass genocided, technology and things they're hiding. It takes somebody with a higher brain capacity and organization to put us under this bill as a collective yeah we've been your politicians the most powerful people in these positions everything has been overtaken by aliens it started here in ohio i'm in ohio to where you can see somebody getting a ass kicked for simply minding a business a few hours later there's a bird there's a plane chemtrails and there's a flying saucer right next to it Everything exists out here. We got all kind of updates and patch notes. Some things need to be uninstalled, but they have yet to be uninstalled. They here. You know, like when you get an update on Fortnite, the difference is they ain't take nothing out. They ain't patching nothing. Everything is here all at once. We got obesity. We got midgets out here. We got anorexic people out here. We got little. You know, if you've been to Ohio, it's, it's crazy. But yeah, it started here in Ohio. This is a documentary. This isn't fiction. That's it for the video. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. My volume right? Uh, all right, let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick, and Rumble. Before we start rumbling, I kick your ass and you end up twitching. Now go and check this movie out. The nostalgia, the, the feeling, the vibe it, you get from it. It's like no others. That's why I want to make something that's, again, what I was referring to earlier, that, that keep that alive and that, that vibe. But I'll see y'all in the next video, man. I'm out.